What up, y'all? It's me, Nate Almighty. I'm back with another Rikers Island slash prison story. This is going to be educational now. This video, right, is for those of us who you're not involved in the streets, but you want to know what it's like to be in prison. And this is also for the people who been to prison before, right? And you just like watching this kind of content. And this is also for that person who has a loved one that's locked up. Right? And you want to know what they may have to face in there. Or you might be about to do time yourself and you never did time before, right? These are the 10 types of inmates that are in every single prison, at least in America. Now, out of this 10, I'm telling you, right, at least 80, I mean, at least eight of these kinds of inmates are in every single kind of prison. And give or take one or two of them won't be at any given pr prison, but this is going to be very, very accurate, all right? Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit that like button. Without further ado, let's get to it, right? Number one, right? The guy who's absolutely terrified and just wants to do his time and go home, right? Can be either neutral or affiliated. This is the guy who, who he wanted to make some money, so he did some crimes, right? He not necessarily from the streets. He definitely did not want to go to prison. Nobody wants to go to prison. But regardless of anything, he got himself locked up. And now he has to deal with it. He has no street backing. It's no hood in him, right? It's it's no hood in him. It's like what 50 Cent said about job. It's no hood in him at all, right? But he still got to do his time. So he's terrified, but he still got to do his bed. And he'll have to find his way to survive, man. Guys like this, they likely will pay somebody for security. Things like that, right? Maybe with a booty. Who knows, right? But getting to number two of the top 10 kind of inmates you'll see in every prison, right? The guy with ties to powerful people, but he's actually pussy, even though he acts tough, right? Most of the time, this is any random gang member, or this could be the little brother or the cousin of a high-ranking gang member, okay? This is going to be a guy who you can tell, like, he's not tough at all, but he got enough clout because of who his brother is. And I remember it was a situation like this where there was this guy who was a high-ranking blood member when I was in Rikers Island. He was a stand-up dude. And when his brother came in, who wasn't even a part of the gang, but the guy had so much power that once he came into the spot, right, they immediately gave him a powerful position, even though he didn't earn it. And that did not fly with other gang members there who still had a power position, especially if they weren't in that same set of the guy who was powerful because they didn't give a damn because they didn't know him. You know what I'm saying? This is like, there ain't too many of these kinds of people but these kinds of people definitely exist and they are there. That was number two. Number three, right? The reform savage who reads now. This is the type of person who they was wilding out. A lot of times they catch a very, very serious charge that causes them to have to do a lot of time what they're looking at a lot of time, right? So they might start off reading. They might start off reading because they're going to law library, right? I'm looking out my window, <laughs> so fat butt, but they start reading probably because they're going to law library and they want to find out about their case. And they've been locked up for a considerable amount of time. I would say, I would say, you know what I'm saying? These are people who've been locked up most of the time for two years and better, but they're probably looking at a lot of time. They begin reading, okay? They're savages. They came into the prison, right? They was already tough. They beat people up, maybe stab somebody, maybe cut somebody, extorted some people. Prison gets boring, okay? They learn how to live in there. It's cool. They in a position of power, whatever. Nobody gonna mess with them. They get bored with just being negative. Like, it takes a lot out of you, right? Nobody initially wants to be negative, but you have to because you gotta survive. It's literally eat or get ate, kill or be killed. But he starts, he starts mentally growing. Maybe he takes a Shahada, gives his life to Allah. Maybe he gives his life to Christ, right? Right? 
become a born again Christian or something. But now he reads. He's reading The Art of War by Sun Tzu. He's reading The Four Day Laws of Power by Robert Greene, right? He's reading The Autobiography of Malcolm X. He's reading As a Man Thinketh. I could keep going on and on. Some of these books I read, though. I read, I mean, I read as well when I was in here. And he's the person who, regardless how much time he's got, he intends on being a productive member of society when he gets back. A lot of times these are the most respectable people you're going to run into in prison, right? They'll, they'll end up protecting somebody who's weak without having to extort them, right? It's just because they don't want to see the weak get preyed on anymore, right? They used to do that in the past. They don't want to encourage that no more, right? They want to be the change that they want to see in the world and in the prison. That's number three. Number four, the religious inmate. So like I said, this is the person who Christian, Muslim, they put that first above all prison politics as much as possible. Okay. Some of them, they still get into negative stuff. Some of them may still be gang members, but they're religious. More times than not, they'll be more known for that than anything else, right? And that's number four. Number five, the rizzed up inmate, okay? The rizzed up inmate, uh, there's definitely not that many. Out of everyone on this list, this is the least likely person you're going to run into. And when I say the rizzed up inmate, this is the guy who is so clouded up, he gets to sleep with a female officer. Even if she's the ugliest, most unattractive female officer, right? The fact that you got to smash an officer in prison makes you the most lit nigga on the planet, according to everyone else in prison, period. Like, it's that real. Like, the need for female contact is real in prison. Like, even to the point where I got earlier videos where I state that when the female CEOs used to get up out their chair and they wasn't looking, like... We would run and smell their chair. Smell their chairs just to be close to the scent of a woman. Like, it's it's that real. This guy, right? For him to be the rizzed up inmate, the officer is very comfortable with him, right? Right? She confides in him in a different way. This guy will always be someone who is running the entire environment that he's bidding in. This is the person who... Kevin Gates would describe in his prison lingo as someone who controls the temperature. This is going to be a high-ranking gang member. This is going to be somebody who got the drugs popping in there, right? He got to be lit enough to where the woman wouldn't mind risking it all. So he's going to be someone who she would have been dating, right? If she was out in the streets, she was out in the tent. Same kind of dude. These are women who like street dudes, gangsters. But they're not going to risk it for everyone. So you got to be rizzed up. Rizzed up. You got to have the power, right? To get somebody hurt who she has a problem with within that same jail. You got that type of power, you'll get that type of box. But out of 100% of an inmate population, this is probably 1% to 2% of all inmates like worldwide in America. So that's nationwide, right? That's the rizzed up inmate. Number six of the 10 kind of inmates you'll find in every prison, right? The neutral living comfortable doesn't exist in every spot. Circumstances determine his existence. Now me, I was this person. The neutral was living comfortable. And mind you, I had to suffer before I got to that point. You don't just come in and you're neutral and you're living comfortably. You would have had to have a severely big name in the street. Now, I was in the street. People knew who I was, but I wasn't the biggest gangster in the street. I wasn't, I wasn't a shooter. Shooters get the biggest name in the streets, right? Shooters get the biggest name in the streets. The biggest drug dealers get the biggest name in the streets. I was a jack boy. I was robbing. I was strong arming. I was putting guns in people's face, robbing them. Occasionally doing burglaries, things like that. It makes money. It'll get you clout in the hood, but it don't make you like a celebrity in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And if you rob the wrong people, it'll make you a hated and disgruntled against person in the hood. But like I said, the circumstances determine whether you can get this off or not because 
In most situations, the only people living comfortably are the people who are in gangs. But me, I was in a special circumstance where I wasn't necessarily neutral, but I was a part of a street crew in the Bronx that was known for really putting in work. But I still wasn't like a part of a major gang like Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, Patias. But I came from a hood that was making so much noise that by the time I got there, we already produced legends, right? We already produced legends. So once I got there, it's was like, yo, you from Cortland, you know, such and such, such and such, and you get in there, there's a significant amount of people from the hood that I know, they already in there, they already in positions of power. So I only had to deal with the rough stuff early in the beginning when I got somewhere and it was like <laughs> Brooklyn and Queens niggas there and they ran it. They don't care about what we was doing in the Bronx. They don't care. That's when I had to deal with the, yo, what you doing? Like, like we trying to extort you. Like, what you, like, you with the program and all that other stuff. And then I had to vehemently deny it and get a foot stuck up my ass. Not literally. You know, this is prison. But yeah, I got beat up a couple times. Like I got jumped a couple times, you feel me? I had to deal with that early on in the beginning because I had to get my name up and my reputation up with people who were not from the Bronx and did not care that I was from a certain specific hood in the Bronx that was putting in the most pain. Listen, Cortlin, Cortlin between 2006, you know what I mean? To like 2000 and like 13, 12, Top two, top three, most violent, most dangerous hoods in New York, in the Bronx, in the Bronx, putting in the most work. It was going down. A lot of us was getting locked up. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of dudes still locked up. And because of my circumstances, I was lucky enough to have an easier bid than most, right? And that was number six. Number seven, the broke gang leader who has to oppress others because that's all he has to live for. When you think about the most aggressive inmates, the meanest inmates, right? The inmates that want to extort you the most, they steal the most, right? They're the most disgruntling, disgruntled, right? A lot of time, if you pay attention, they don't have um, solid support at home. So they dealing with their insecurities, you know, as far as how can you be a high ranking gang member? How can you run the whole pod, um, run the whole dorm, run the whole mod, run the whole uh, cell block and you ain't even getting no money in your account. You don't got a girl, your mother looking out for you, nothing. Maybe your mother died, grandmother died, whatever. Maybe they cut you off, whatever. So you got to maintain the status quo. You have to look like you don't need that because you're such a big, bad, bully boss. So therefore, you got to violate and oppress others so you can still look tough. You can't call yourself tough, right? And at the same time, you ain't got nobody looking out for you out in the town. And you're going to be tough, but you ain't going to be eating good. And it's going to be dudes that's weakening you. They're going to be eating good because they mothers, um, they grandmothers, they girls, they people looking out for them. This is what you have to deal with. And they got to get aggressive. They're usually the most broke. That's a fact. Number eight, the gang member who doesn't like his set, right? Could be because of the way they carry themselves. You're gonna run into situations like this all the time. I, I notice this all the time, right? Gang members could be in a certain set, but you're always gonna have a disgruntled gang member who doesn't like the way dudes are moving. There's gonna be a dude who's not the boss, who's gonna to wanna to be the boss. This is always gonna happen. This is bigger than even gang stuff. This is just man stuff. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wanting to be a chief. Nobody wants to just be a regular Indian, right? Everybody wanna skip a step, right? Everybody wants to be a leader without learning how to follow, right? That's niggas problem a lot, you know what I'm saying, going on. That's another inmate you'll find, right? Number nine, the booty bandit, right? Almost always a gang leader involved in the courtesy of booty and protection, okay? The booty bandit, this is the person who is gonna bandit ties, I just made that word up, your booty, all right? They're going to find reasons to get your booty from you. You go to prison, right? You might be broke. You come back from wreck or something, it'll be like a cake or something on your bed. <laughs> find treats on your bed, you eat them. Next thing you know, you owe. 
because you was eating free food. That's why the 48 laws of power, one of the laws says despise the free lunch because there's no such thing as getting something without giving anything else in return. There's no such thing as getting something for nothing. That's just not how the universe works, okay? Where there's an empty gap in the universe, the universe will find something to fill it up, right? Or, or you're terrified, like the type of person I discussed earlier on, right? And you want protection. Here's going to come a high-ranking gang member, right? Who's been locked up for so long, he don't care, right? Everyone knows he likes booty. So he's going to say, I'll protect you. But what that mouth do, though? That's the type of dude you're going to be dealing with, right? Now, before I get to number 10, right? I want to give a honorable mention. And that's the guy who joins a gang or a religious organization just for protection because he's booty, right? Without further ado, number 10 of the top 10 kinds of inmates you will meet in any prison anywhere, right? The most undesirables, people with heinous offenses towards women and children and old people. These are the most hated people in prison, right? If you are one of these people and you about to go to prison, just sign in the PC. But even PC can't save people from still violating you in some kind of way, right? Some kind of way if they find out what you did. These are the most undesirable people in prison. Nobody will ever have respect for them no matter where they go. No matter where they go. And there you have it. The 10 kinds of inmates you see in every prison everywhere. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I 